Continuing on with techniques of differentiation, we've learned two of our four shortcuts so far, so let's learn the next two. Okay, so the next rule that we have is y equals c times f of x. This is called the constant multiple rule because what we have is we have a constant multiplied by some, some other function or something else here. When we take the derivative of this, that's saying that we're just going to pull the constant outside, and then we're going to take the derivative of our function just like we see it. So our constant just gets pulled outside times, and then the derivative of our function. So I'm going to label that f prime of x. Okay, so let me emphasize that with our examples over here. In example A, we have 3 times x to the fifth, and that's a function of y. So our derivative, using the correct notation, dy dx, is I have my constant 3, that just stays as is, times, and then I'm going to take the derivative of this x to the fifth. Now, I can take the derivative of it using those other rules that we've learned so far. So in this one, that's where I'm going to use a power rule. So I bring my power down in front, and then I subtract 1 from my original power. So that becomes times. 5x to the fourth. Now, the good thing about these is we can simplify. We can multiply 3 times 5. Those are both constants or both coefficients. So that tells me that the derivative of this overall is 15x to the fourth. So now that you've seen this in an example, why don't you go ahead and pause the video and see if you can do parts B and C on your own. Okay, so in part B, we take the derivative f prime of x, we hold my constant of 3 eighths out to the side or out in front, doesn't matter that it's a fraction here, and then I multiply it by the derivative of x to the negative seventh, where again that is a power rule. So I have negative 7x subtracting 1 gives me negative 8. So to simplify this, this gives me f prime of x. We need to know how to multiply fractions. Well, I can put my negative 7 over 1 and turn that whole number into a fraction. And then we know that we multiply fractions straight across. So in the numerator, I have 3 times negative 7, which gives me negative 21. And in the denominator, 8 times 1 gives me 8. And that is multiplied by x to the negative 8. So there is my overall derivative of part C. In part C, we do the exact same thing. g prime of t, I take my constant of negative 4 and I hold it out to the front. Does not matter that it's negative. And then I take the derivative of t to the 1 half. So I bring my power down in front. I subtract 1 from my original power. 1 half minus 1 gives me negative 1 half. And then so to simplify, this gives me g prime of t equals. So again, I have to multiply these numbers out in front. Well, negative 4 times 1 half, if I multiply straight across, or I like to reduce fractions first. So 4 divided by 2 gives me 2. 2 divided by 2 gives me 1. So negative 4 times 1 half is the same thing as negative 2. And then I copy down my t to the negative 1 half. So there is my derivative of part c. Okay, so that's our third shortcut, our third differentiation technique. So let us learn the last one. And this is called the sum rule, but I've inserted my own words of difference because it works the exact same way no matter whether we are doing addition or subtraction. Now we have proved this one fully in one of our foundation pieces. We did it in our third foundation piece where we derived y equals x squared minus 5x. And that gave us the derivative, dy dx, was equal to 2x minus 5. And then we derived each of those pieces separately, the x squared and the negative 5x separately, where my dy dx was equal to 2x, and my dy dx 
was equal to negative 5. So then we wanted to figure out how those two parts were related. Well, we figured out if we could add our two terms in our original equation, then that works out the same way as adding our two terms in our derivative equation. So basically, you can just take the derivative of the first piece and add that to the derivative of the second piece. So that's what is called the sum rule. If I have y equals f of x plus g of x, where I want to take the derivative of these and they are added together, I can just take the derivative of my first piece, which I'm going to call f prime of x, and add that to the derivative of my second piece, g prime of x. Okay, so I can do that in these examples over here on the right. And basically, these examples combine all of the four shortcuts are all of the four differentiation techniques that we have learned up to this point. So if you can work through these examples, then that proves that you have mastered all four of our differentiation techniques. So pause the video and see what you come up with. Okay, in the first one, my notation, dy dx, because I'm taking the derivative of it, in the first piece, I have a constant multiple, so 6 times x squared. So my constant holds out in front, and then times the derivative of x squared. That's a power rule. I bring my power down in front, and I subtract 1 from the original power. So 2 minus 1 gives me to the first power. Plus, here, 2 times x. So I have a constant multiple rule. So my constant holds out front. My power was 1. So if I bring that down, that's times 1, x. If I subtract a power, 1 minus 1 gives me a power of 0. Minus, so this is where my subtraction comes in, so meaning this is the same way whether it's a sum or actual difference. The derivative of 9, where 9 is a constant, so the derivative of that is zero. So I have basically worked through every single piece part by part here. All right, now what I want to do is I want to simplify this. So first, 6 times 2 gives me 12. Now I wrote that as x to the first power, but most of the time we're just going to write that as x. So the derivative of my first piece simplifies to be 12x. Plus, 2 times 1 gives me 2, now, what about this x to the 0? Well, hopefully you remembered back from college algebra or maybe even any place else, anything to the 0 power always simplifies to be 1. So really, this is 2 times 1 times 1, or the derivative of that just gives me 2. So that's a good thing to have kind of in your tool bag there. The derivative of x to the first power will always just simplify to be 1. Because when you subtract the exponent, you get 0, and anything to the 0 power is just 1. Last, I have minus 0. Of course, I'm not going to list that here because that's not simplified. So my derivative of part A is 12x plus 2. Now for part B, f of t is equal to that function there. So my derivative with the correct notation is f prime of t. My constant of one-third holds out in front times the derivative of t to the sixth, where I do a power rule, gives me six times t to the fifth power, minus one-fifth t cubed. Well, I pull my constant out front. I times it by the derivative of t cubed. That's, again, another power rule. Three t squared plus my pi here, again, another constant, constant multiplied, so I pull that pi out in front, and the derivative of t. So the long way is t to the first power, so I bring my power down in front, and then when I subtract a power, that gives me zero. But we just learned that the derivative of any variable to the first power always just simplifies to be one, because zero in an exponent will simplify to be one. So. Simplifying this here, I have f prime of t. When I multiply 1 third times 6, that reduces. That's like the same thing as saying 6 divided by 3. So that gives me 2 times t to the fifth minus 
when I multiply these here, one-fifth times three, I can make three into a fraction by putting it over one. So then I multiply straight across, gives me three-fifths t squared. And then I said all of this simplifies here to be one, so this is plus pi. So we have taken the derivative of part b. And in these examples here, we have combined all four of our shortcuts or all four of our differentiation techniques.